All right, let's talk more about all of this with my panel. David Swerdlick is a CNN political commentator and assistant editor at The Washington Post. James Gagliano is a CNN law enforcement analyst and retired FBI supervisory special agent. And Mark Zaid is a national security attorney. Good to see all of you. All right, David, you first. You know, the president says he is 100 percent willing yeah. to testify. Um, his attorney might think otherwise. Would the president testify or even be subpoenaed? Well, uh, there's not much President Trump could have said to that question other than that he was 100% uh, willing to testify. Can you imagine if he had come out there in that press availability yesterday and said, well, we'll see, it would have just made him look at least politically like he was trying to dodge something, especially after uh, Director Comey came out there and spoke fairly candidly and with this sort of, uh, you know, half bureaucrat, half folksy, aw shucks demeanor that uh, drove the news for the last day or two. Um, I, w whether or not he'll be subpoenaed, it seems uh, t clear to me that there's a possibility that one day we'll see him testify uh, 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 in, in a closed setting, maybe like President Clinton uh, was deposed back in the 90s, although uh, I, I am not sure of the what legal steps would need to be taken to actually see him uh, in front of cameras in a congressional committee room or certainly not in court. Mm. So then James with Mueller building his team of investigators, do you believe um, they are moving toward the direction of perhaps deposing the president, whether it be privately or even publicly, uh, asking him to testify? Absolutely, Fred. I, I think we, we should anticipate that. This is reminiscent of, of Kenneth Starr and, and William Jefferson Clinton. And mm. buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be an interesting ride. I, I was struck this past week. For me, it was like being in a, in a Dickens novel. It was mm -hmm. the tale of two th cities, the best of times and the worst of times. I, I watched an FBI director that I thought had been beleaguered and, and beat down over the course of the last 30 days since he was fired. And I watched him come in and, and defend the institution of the FBI and defend his own honor and say some pretty harsh things about a president that, listen, none of us on either sides of the political continuum can, can condone the behavior and the, the inappropriate requests that he made. What struck me, I guess, and disappointed me was the fact that, that he admitted to the leak. Uh, and the way that the leak was conducted by giving it by giving his memo to a surrogate to give to the New York Times and listen even though it was it, unclassified uh, material yes his personal Le memo like a journal yes but but you have to keep in mind Fred everything that an FBI agent up to and including the director puts down within the four corners of a document belongs to the Department of Justice you're not allowed to give that out without going through the proper channels and there's a there's a a, a disclosure pre-publication disclosure rule that's on the books now listen people can argue consequentialism and say the ends justify the means what I think the director did unfortunately was seed the moral high ground and you heard the president no collusion no obstruction he's a leaker and I think unfortunately as much as it pains me to say this mm. unfortunately that became the story as a result of the leak instead of the fact that you had seven pages of some pretty damning mm. testimony about the president's conduct so James it sounds like that you believe might impugn you know Comey's credibility because this will be an issue of credibility it's he said you know he said it's going to be Comey's word versus the Trump Trump's word and and their history of of their remarks the credibility of their remarks Fred you you and I spoke last weekend and 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 you'll have to agree I've been full-throated and unwavering in my defense of this FBI director he is a man of high moral rectitude he has great character and if it's a he said he said I believe that 99.9% .9 of America is going to come down on the side of this career public servant but I believe that the admission to the leak has diminished him and, mm. and and it pains me to say that because trust me on social media I've been called a Comey shill mm. I think he's an unbelievably accomplished career public servant and a man of high character and integrity but the mm. leak diminished him and I believe he ceded the moral high ground to the White House mm. and their narrative wait Fred can so, I just ask Fred can I just yeah, ask yeah. James a question on that real quick sure. uh, look I, I, I understand that if uh, if director Comey had actually handed off a copy of an FBI 302 or some FBI official document that was in an investigative file to his friend then to the media that I, I do see the point 
point that you're making that that would be maybe a breach of his past role as director of the FBI. But do you think that he has ceded the moral high ground just because he came out and told a story after he was fired and after the president uh, basically went on national TV and said that he was thinking about the Russia investigation in mind when he fired uh, when he fired Director Comey? It, is that why he uh, ceded the moral high ground? David, fair argument, and trust me, I'm not here to defend the president's actions. I don't think anybody, unless they're, you know, working for the White House, can defend his actions. Okay. Where, he see, where he seated the moral high ground is here. If I want to write a book about my 25-year experiences in the FBI, right. that intellectual property, even though it belongs to me, it's my proprietary interest, I still have to get it cleared. So the argument, and it's a nuanced argument, and I understand where you're coming from, the argument is if he didn't turn over the actual paper and he just shared his experiences, uh, listen, and I hate to take the side of the president in this issue, but a private conversation with the FBI director, bereft of criminal activity, and we can argue the obstruction of justice, case, yeah. but bereft of criminal activity, that is Department of Justice material and should have been cleared through. If he can't go to the White House to get a special mm -hmm. prosecutor or to Capitol Hill, he should have gone to DOJ and to the so career Mark, prosecutors there and brought it there. All right, sorry, James. Okay. So, Mark, let me hear your point of view on that because, you know, there's the terminology leak, there's whistleblower, there is the concern that Comey had uh, that he wanted a special counsel that perhaps by handing over this information to his friend who would then, you know, give it to the media that would help uh, encourage a special counsel. So all of this that we're talking about, is it breaking the law? Is there something wrong with, um, from your point of view, what Comey did with those notes? So in my practice, I represent probably more than anybody that I'm aware of, uh, those who write books and articles that were once inside the federal government, especially the intelligence community and many times the FBI. So yes, there is a pre-publication review requirement. And yes, by sharing the memos, Comey violated that. It is a technical argument. It is a civil breach. So fine. The U.S. government can sue him for breach of contract. He didn't make any money, so there's no damages. But by uh, releasing an unclassified memo, he's, he is allowed to do that. It's no different than really releasing his recollection. And, and by the strictures of what the pre-pub review requirements are, actually anybody who, who, like my fellow guests here, who talks on air, technically you're supposed to clear that with the FBI. It's not practical. It's not realistic. He didn't say anything that was inappropriate. Uh, he's commenting upon current things, but technically it would be a problem. But for Comey, and mo more importantly, he can be construed, even though he probably didn't intend it this way, to be a whistleblower. And there is precedent within the U.S. government system that by giving information, I'll use the word sharing instead of leaking, because leaking has a negative, unlawful connotation. By sharing the information to the public that was unclassified, and he was an original classification authority, so he can make that decision when, when he was the FBI director. By sharing that with the public through the media, he is a whistleblower uh, entitled to due process and protection uh, from any type of retaliation. Now, there's not much that the White House can do to him hmm. uh, since he's not in the government any longer. Even though the president says, and through his attorney, that they're going to file a complaint. They can file, I mean, I suppose they could file a bar complaint wherever he still has his active law license. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, if the government goes after him because of having blown the whistle on something that was incredibly important at a level of waste, fraud, abuse, maybe mm -hmm. unlawful conduct, mm -hmm. he's entitled to lawful protection. All right, gentlemen, stick around. I also want to ask you about Jeff Sessions, who also will be uh, called to testify uh, next week. James Comey revealing there may have been a third meeting that Jeff Sessions did not reveal as it pertains to a meeting with or having contact with uh, a Russian. All right, so.